Hey guys, Ivan here and this video we are starting with some breaking news and unfortunately it's not good news Andrew Jack pulled out of Arnold Classic, both Arnold Classic UK and Ohio and he posted this Before I start discussing this decision whether it was right or wrong and potential reasons for him doing this First, I'm gonna read what he has to say. So he says, I'm pulling out of both Arnolds. I'm having so many things happening at the same time from different factors and all needs my attention, which makes it difficult to concentrate for this prep. I don't want to go there anything short of 100%. I just don't want to make up the numbers nor get placings, if not for the win. And then there's also this. He says, need to spend more time with family, businesses, work, etc., also, I need an off-season. My health is awesome. My body is calling for rest. So here is a photo, the most recent photo of Andrew Jack. Why am I showing you this photo now? It's not a physique update. You're gonna understand in a moment. First of all, I gotta say, this makes total sense. I mean, this guy didn't stop competing ever since he turned pro. He had show after show with only months in between. So it was weird when I saw that he was doing the Arnold Classic and I was the first to say that he doesn't need to do this because he can't win. He can't beat Samson or Hari Japan unless he improves on his muscularity. He needs an off-season. He needs to get bigger. But why am I showing you this photo again? Because this is... It's on a physique update, but you can see his face. And his face was bloated. I don't remember seeing his face looking this bloated even in the off-season before. And he is seven weeks out of the Arnold Classic. Also, I don't know if you guys caught this podcast, but basically Chris Psycho Lewis was guest here. And you guys know that he is training Andrew Jack. He's not coaching him, he is training him. But basically here in this podcast he spoke how he's actually kind of working together with Chris Asito on his diet as well. He's giving him suggestions, he's telling him what he thinks because he's seeing him in person. But he was never with him, they never trained together for longer than six weeks. And this year he was supposed to come to the US and train with Chris Michael Lewis for the last couple of weeks. He was still not in the US and he wasn't planning on going over there for a while, for a couple of weeks more. And more importantly, when Dennis James asked Chris Psycho Lewis whether Andrew is on point or he is behind, Chris Psycho Lewis actually said that he was behind. I mean, he also said that Andrew is always kind of running late, but they make it somehow at the very end, but this time he was behind more than usual. And Dennis James also commented that Andrew's head seems too bloated now, so they were worried about whether Andrew is gonna make it with conditioning. To be honest, his conditioning wasn't very good even at the Mr. Olympia, so if he wanted to be ready for the Arnold Classic to be actually conditioned, to be shredded, he needed to start this prep kind of aggressively, but he was behind. So his explanation for why he decided to quit to pull out of the Arnold Classic prep is because he needs to focus on his family, on his business and stuff like that, that he needs an off-season, that he needs rest. He said that, and that's all true, I believe so, but he didn't go into specifics. I believe what really happened is his, his not just his body, but his mind wasn't willing to prep again because it is pointless. He's torturing himself, he doesn't allow himself to take any rest, and for what? He's gonna be third, again, at the Arnold Classic. What sense does that make? I mean, sure, he's growing his brand, his name is more popular, more shows he does, but at this point, really, he's not gonna benefit that much from doing multiple shows a year. He should focus on growing, on making more progress, because he doesn't need that much progress. If he progresses another, let's say, 10, 15 pounds, then he can be a top threat. He can challenge Samson Dauda. But right now, he just can't do it. Even if he got super shredded for the Arnold, Samson is still bigger. He is heavier than him on stage and he is shorter. So, Andrew Jack needs more muscle. We all can see that. He is humongous. He's really big. But still, for that height, for his frame, he still needs a little bit more. So, overall, I believe that not doing the Arnold Classic is definitely the right move. But I don't like, you know, quitting and pulling out. I mean, he already confirmed that he was doing, he got to the point where he was seven weeks out. 
if he thought he couldn't do it, then he shouldn't have confirmed it and you know, let us all know that he was going to be there. That's kind of disappointing. I mean, we all were hoping to see him against Samson, against Hadi. You know, he was definitely a top three guy. And he pulled out because I'm sure because he was too tired and he wasn't willing to go through another prep again. I wonder which show he's gonna end up doing because if he wants to compete at the Mr. Olympia this year, he needs to qualify. Top 5 is no longer automatically qualified, so he needs to win a show if he wants to do the Mr. Olympia, but I think maybe he should skip this year's Mr. Olympia and let's say focus on next year's Arnold Classic and qualify for the next year's Mr. Olympia by winning the Arnold Classic, because that seems like a reasonable plan. I think he can do it if he really decides to put in the work and make a lot of progress, which I think he can. Because he actually made a ton of progress throughout these two years without an actual off without an off season at all, like he was only competing and rebounding and that's it. But we'll see what he's gonna do. Like I said, definitely the right move not to do the Arnold Classic, but to pull out that seven weeks out because you're too tired, not very cool. But I guess he had to do it, so it was done. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Next up, we got an off-season update of a bodybuilder who knows what he wants, who knows exactly what he's doing. It's Regan Grimes, who is focused on growing, who is focused on the off-season ever since the Mr. Olympia ended. Unlike Andrew Jack, who seems to not understand that he actually needs more muscle to improve, uh, Regan Grimes is well aware. He needs more tissue, he needs more mass and he's focused on growing, and this is what he's doing, and this is what he looks like right now, and he looks absolutely bigger than ever. The scale maybe is not really saying exactly that, because as you can see, he says, not too shabby for 134 kilos. Let's keep this rolling. 134 kilos is 295 pounds, and up until recently, he was 300 pounds, and I believe he was a little bit over 300. I thought at one point he was 305, but I guess he went backwards a little bit. Why is this? Maybe he was starting to get too fat, too sloppy, so he decided to pull back a little. Because right here, his conditioning is looking really good, right? For this weight, for almost 300 pounds, he's actually holding very decent conditioning. I mean, I, could, I, I think it would be okay if he got a little bit chubbier than this. But he doesn't plan on doing this, in the comment section he basically said that this is the fattest, the softest that he is going to get. He is not going to continue pushing things aggressively anymore, he's probably going to cruise around this weight and, you know, add a little muscle slowly over time, over weeks and months. His plan is to compete later in the year, somewhere like right before the Mr. Olympia, so he's going to have time to make a lot more progress. Here is another video that he posted of himself doing some tricep pushdowns, and yeah, I mean, he definitely looks bigger than ever. I mean, look at the size of this freaking arm, like, of that tricep. Like, this guy is freaking massive. I mean, these 300 pounds are looking really good on him, because he has some height, he's not a short bodybuilder, he has a very aesthetic shape, and he can get big, he can get massive on the right places. For example, like, his triceps here are looking super, super big. And I believe this year Regan Grimes is actually gonna make another leap at the Mr. Olympia. He was ninth last year and next year, who knows, maybe even top 7, top 6? I don't know, I don't know, that's, that's really hard, but anything is possible. With this structure, with, with more muscle, with good conditioning, yeah, this guy can, can definitely do some damage. What do you guys think? Alright, next we got something kind of interesting, it's James Hollingshead who is prepping for the Arnold Classic, both Ohio and UK, and he just uploaded this video of him doing some T-bar rows, and you guys know that James Hollingshead is probably the strongest bodybuilder today in bodybuilding. For the reference, recently he posted this video of him doing shoulder presses with a free weight bar. Uh, Kevin Levron used to lift four plates, but on a Smith machine. This is free bar, and look at the way he's controlling it, look at how many reps he's doing. This is insane, guys. This is crazy. Four freaking plates on a shoulder press with a free bar. Insane. When Hadi did his infamous T-bar rows, he pulled eight plates. And you guys know how he lifted this, what his form of execution was. I don't need to show you that stuff again. 
but it was eight plates however there was zero control zero contraction uh, maybe like some contraction maybe some tension on the trap static tension but as far as you know the actual rowing that was probably the worst form on t-bar rows the worst ego lifting that i ever saw in my life i'm sure you would agree with that here is what james hollins had he's gonna do also with eight freaking plates you can pause the video and count the plates there is eight of them let's check this out he's gonna stay in a bent over position and check out the form much much better than the way Hari japan is doing it i would say this is basically perfect form i mean it's not exactly textbook but if you put a lot of weight on it you won't be able to squeeze the muscle and you don't really need to squeeze this exercise you focus on the part of the motion where your muscle is lengthened so he's doing basically perfect form with eight plates I don't know if he did this intentionally, exactly the same number of plates like Hari did, but even if he did it accidentally, he definitely did show to us and to Hari how you control 8 plates. If you want to do 8 plates, this is how it's done. If you can't do it like this, lower the weight. And that's just it. Whatever your thoughts are, guys, tell me down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you guys want to see more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.